That a wonderful song. Happy All Saints Day, everybody. This is Father Michael Irwin from St. Catherine Drexel Parish in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, as well as the Tri Parishes in Kleiman, Reeseville, and Elba. It's a great opportunity for us to get together this morning to be able to celebrate all of our saints. And so let us pray. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit on us. Help us to imagine the life of a saint. Help us to imagine our lives being that of a life of a saint. And may you continue to bless your church and build up your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This reading from a book of Revelation helps us to uh, be able to understand, to comprehend uh, the, the what's happening in the heavenly kingdom. I heard the number of those who have been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiping God and exclaiming, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing these white robes, and where do they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful image, isn't it? Can To sit around for at least 15 minutes and imagine heaven. Imagine what it must be like to not only have a very loving God there in the center and yet everywhere, and to have a lot of really good people who did some pretty wonderful things with their lives, who are even themselves finally freed from all of their frailties and their sins and the things they would still do wrong in spite of their very good, you know, good connection to God in this world. And to imagine, you know, people like ancient saints like Isaiah being able to talk to Matthew, who was able to connect Isaiah and Jesus together and yet be able to connect to a catechist who taught just maybe recently but has died and gone to the heavenly kingdom, how they can all be in conversation together. To imagine that um, great people who sacrificed, like John the Baptist, could then talk to Oscar Romero and to imagine that connection there. Or to imagine someone from Africa, like St. Augustine, being able to talk to somebody in more modern times like Martin Luther King Jr., and to have them in conversation with each other. Uh, To imagine St. Teresa of Avila, who was such a great doctor of the church, such a great teacher for all of us, Uh, to be able to have her in conversation with St. Francis of Assisi, a person she admired and and modeled her life after, and how that could be connected to all the secular Franciscans and all the Carmelites who have themselves followed the example of both of those people Mm -hmm. in order to establish a realm of holiness. Imagine this conflagration of people, <laughs> imagine them being able to be able to this conversation to be closer to our Lord and to closer to the one he loves, even as they're being building their friendship and their admiration of one another. And imagine these loved ones hanging out with your loved ones who've gone before us in faith, who are finally freed from all their frailty and their sin and being mercifully judged by Jesus Christ himself and allowed over time to get the final healing, the final purgation, in order to see God for who God truly is, maybe clearly for the first time in their life. 
what a wonderful blessing that heavenly kingdom is. And hopefully in imagining it and, and being able to capture it, we will realize how much love is coming from that love, bursting out, overflowing from heaven, that it can drip down upon us. And when we're feeling that love dripping down or around from the heavenly kingdom, we could maybe do things we'd otherwise not be capable of doing. I know for myself yesterday we had a Zoom meeting and I was kind of upset with something somebody said and I was about to say something, but my microphone wasn't working. So I had to exit the program, come back into the program, and I realized, you know what, that could have been one of those saints interrupting me, giving me a minute to just slow down and to think, what am I saying? Maybe I need to not say as much. Maybe I need to think and pray and feel and and love more. And maybe then my microphone will be working. But in any case, we're able to receive all those same gifts and, and have some hope that where these people have gone, we day, one day can go. Now, obviously, we're about to head into the election here or into the counting of the election, which is going to be happening this week. And that's where, how do we begin to be a saint in this specific situation? When you think of each of those saints I named at the beginning here, they all were in their times defined by their times and the task that is right before them. St. Peter was tasked with bringing together and starting a church. If he was born in another era, he may have never had that specific calling. Or St. Teresa of Calcutta, seeing the poverty right before her in India and realized she didn't need to look elsewhere for a path to holiness, sainthood, this is her path. In the same way, we have an election this week, and it's a very contentious one. And for good reasons, a lot of very important decisions need to be made. What is our path to sainthood this week? Let's listen to the Beatitudes, which is our mission statement given to us by Jesus Christ, and be able to maybe answer that question in our hearts of what is our path forward. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will be see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I find within this Gospel reading um, some dualities going on things that on the surface are opposite. And maybe they are, to some extent, opposite. So we're supposed to obviously speak what we feel is the righteous thing. You know, if we're in our heart of hearts, we say, okay, there's clearly a right and a wrong here. We're supposed to speak up about it. And sometimes we are even persecuted about it. And so on one level, the Beatitudes anticipates a... Um, challenging time and a time of conflict. And yet at the other points, it shows that we're supposed to be merciful and that we're supposed to be peacemakers. This is interesting contrasts, aren't they? They're almost like opposite to each other. To me, the line from chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes comes that for everything there's a season under heaven. And we've been in a season of contentiousness. And that's great because the more we argue with each other, the better quality decisions we're capable of making. And so there's something really good that what we see here. But at the same point, we can overdo it. You know, some people worry that no matter which way the election goes, we're going to end up with some sort of riots. 
Well, that's a separate choice on our part. And so we have to have every time and season under heaven that comes to us, that we recognize that, yeah, sometimes it's important to be contentious, but you know what? That we would riot is a separate choice, and and that's destructive, and that's mean-spirited, which is why Jesus put all of these things into the Beatitudes. He did it to put in just one or the other. He didn't say that we're just supposed to be peacemakers, although we're not supposed to speak our minds, or speaking our minds is something that in our hearts and our souls is not something that your average Christian should do. Yes, it is. But at the same point, we're also supposed to keep our eye on not going down up a destructive path. That is a whole different thing. And this time, I think we're just going to need a little bit of patience and not get kind of suckered in by a need for an immediate response. Uh, I think our media these days really wants things very quickly and very immediately, and they want it very dramatically. This is what pays for advertisement on our TVs and on our Facebooks and everything else is this kind of urgency uh, and contentiousness is what pays the bills for media. You know, we have to realize that we can detach from all that. What we're focused on is love. What we're focused on is to just truly think things through intelligently. You know, we're supposed to use our souls and our hearts and love and to allow ourselves to be a community. Yeah, we have disagreements, rather lively and serious disagreements with each other. But at the end, we are a community. It's so good for us to hear last weekend within our gospel reading that we are to love God with our whole heart and soul and mind. But we're also supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. We need to keep that in the forefront of our minds so that, you know, we don't find ourselves ripping ourselves apart when we could continue to find a path to take care of each other, especially the most vulnerable, and to not wreck resources, not wreck relationships that would be super valuable to be able to build up our world and build up our community. And so let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for giving us a vision of the saints and giving us hope that that's where we're going to go to all the saints. Help us this week, maybe even this day, to know our path to be a saint. Help us to live at least a little bit these beatitudes through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we have glimpses of sainthood that we could offer to the world, and to encourage that same opportunity from our neighbor so we can truly give to each other what is our best. It is who we are when we're doing the right thing and filled with the Holy Spirit. And may you help us to be merciful and help us to be humble as we are able to put you first in doing this, Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, may God bless you. Again, this is Father Michael Irwin from St. Catherine Drexel in Beaver Dam as well as the tri-parishes in Climate, Reesville, and Elba. God bless you.